Welcome back to another episode of a guaranteed way to never sell your house. <laughs> this house behind me guys is the perfect example for today's video, okay? This house we walked by a little over a month ago, it was the end of June, they were listing this house for sale for 2.7 million dollars, okay? Now they fired their old real estate agent and they have a new one and raised the price half a million dollars. Now it's $3.2 million. And by the way, they've been trying to sell this place since April of 2021 and have raised the price almost a million dollars since then and nobody has bought this house. This is the perfect example of what not to do if you're a seller, especially in today's housing market, guys, because clearly it's been over a year, they haven't been able to sell this house. And why is that? Because obviously, they are being extremely greedy. They think the house is worth literally a million dollars more than it was just one year ago, which is obviously ridiculous and completely unrealistic, okay? So it's no wonder that they weren't able to sell this house. Check it out. This is the one that we saw next door before. Still building it. Little by little, it's coming along. Now, in my opinion, the people who own this house are mentally ill, okay, guys? You cannot reasonably expect, as a seller, that you're going to be able to continually raise the price of your home and some magic situation is going to happen where you're going to sell it for way more than what it's actually worth. Now, clearly, there's no buyers for this house. It's been over a year, and the listing agents who took this listing are probably just as delusional as the sellers thinking that they can sell it for this price. I mean, you couldn't pay me to take a listing like that because it's gonna be a huge waste of time, guaranteed. And this is the perfect introduction for today's video because chances are, if you're looking to sell at the top of the market, it's too late, guys. There was an article that came out today from the Florida Realtors talking about how if you live in Southwest Florida, now realize this might not apply everywhere just yet, but these are the beginning warning signs of what is to come probably everywhere, especially if your market has been shooting up in price over the past few years. So this is what's happening in Southwest Florida right now. There was an article that says the market has peaked and now we are on the downslide of prices going down in this area. And we're not talking about listing prices, we are talking about sale prices, okay? In Lee County, the median sale prices are down 4%. In Collier County, sale prices are down 7% guys 7% is a lot that's a big decrease you know we talk about what's the definition of a housing crash a lot of times my personal opinion 20% right well if sale prices are already down 7% that's almost halfway there so this is how we could start to see some markets start to be officially in a housing crash and other ones may soon follow. And obviously it's not just the sale prices that are down, it's also the amount of closed sales that are down as well. Because what we have in Lee County, the number of sales are down by 10%. In Collier County, the amount of sales are down by 30%, guys. So these are big numbers we're talking about here. These aren't small little blips, these are big numbers. And People have asked me in the comments, and I've told you guys my opinion on this before. You know, what do I think about Southwest Florida? What do I think is going to happen to the market over there? Well, my prediction is coming true as I'm making this video because my prediction was that that area is going to hit, get hit the hardest because they have seen the largest uptick in home prices over the past few years and now the party is officially over guys on top of all of this inventory in the entire area is up eight percent this is the formula for the new housing market crash which we're going to talk about a little more later on in this video obviously the dynamics this time around are different than 2008 but even though they're different, it seems like it's all going to end up as the same result. At least that's how it looks right now. Now, the lesson to learn from this, especially if you're a seller, is that you can still make a healthy profit, guys, but you need to be realistic. Now, obviously, you can live in an area where prices are still healthy. Maybe you don't live in southwest Florida where prices are starting to fall by the month, but that's, that's your cue, right? If you've been thinking about selling, then list now 
at slightly below market value and get that place sold in a week because that's what's going to happen there are there's still a lot of demand for homes that are fairly priced and that people can afford and to top it off guys the average uh, home price reduction in southwest florida right now is between five and ten percent but prices have gone up as much as 70 percent in some of those areas so you're still making a good profit if you were to sell now but not if you try and act like these idiots that we first looked at here you know if you're if you're trying to do something like that it's never going to work all right obviously this is the perfect case study here that trying to keep increasing the price and hiring new realtors in some magic hope that it's all going to come together it's not going to happen now my guess is the seller either lives in that house or they have it rented and they're probably not in a hurry to sell it obviously it's not just sitting there empty which at least they're probably not losing a ton of money on it then so that part is good but they're being completely unrealistic with the price and they're just not going to get it which has become apparent they couldn't even sell it when the market was much hotter than it is right now for 2.275 and now miraculously they think they can sell for 3.2 now we saw this one last time on this walk too that this place is for rent for i think nineteen thousand five hundred dollars still available guys this place has been on the market for a little over 90 days now so imagine if you're the owner of this house this place is sitting empty for three months and if you want 20 grand in rent that's what you think you're gonna get for this place which obviously they're not gonna get then you just lost 60 grand now I don't know in what universe uh, losing 60 grand is a good business plan or real estate investment model but this is the type of psychosis that we're dealing with in today's housing market and it's just gonna be basically we're at a standoff in a lot of cases right these sellers and landlords haven't yet fully caught up with the reality of today's market which is those prices are ancient history and at the same time we have buyers and renters holding off on the sidelines as well saying no way in hell we're paying those prices so it'll be interesting to see who is going to flinch first now guys if you are a buyer right now especially in southwest florida like we saw prices starting to really go down in this area this doesn't mean that right now is the best time ever to buy in southwest florida it means that more opportunities are coming and you're going to be able to get a better deal now than you were able to get like say four to six months ago because no matter what i say or what anybody else says people are gonna buy i know for a fact that some of you are buying so it's important to just be aware that this is the trend that's happening right now and speaking of buying you guys have heard me say in a couple of videos how important it is to get your finances in order and to make sure you have good credit if you want to buy and i found an excellent example today of just how much money having excellent credit can save you if uh, you're looking to buy right now so check this out if you are a borrower with an excellent credit score between 850 and 760 you can qualify for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 5.09 percent and for the same loan somebody who only has a fair credit score which is between 620 and 640 they qualify for a 6.68 percent interest rate guys now that equates to a $288 difference monthly, so almost $300 a month for the life of your loan. And that adds up to a tremendous amount of money. Think about this. In just one year, $300 a month, that's about three grand. That's worth a nice vacation. That's you know making more investments into the stock market if you do that, or buying gold and silver. Whatever you do for your investments to secure your future, that's $3,000 more a month that you can have in your pocket just by having good credit so this is a really important lesson to learn right now if you're thinking about buying still in today's market get that credit score up to the excellent range guys trust me it'll be worth it this is the proof right here and over a 30-year fixed rate loan this is going to save you over a hundred thousand dollars so just think about that next time you're thinking about overextending your credit or not paying your credit card bill whatever it is that's causing you to have low credit here's another one for sale i don't think we saw this one last time we were over this way this is probably a new listing Let's see how much this one's going for
There was another article today about how Open Door, the home buying company, is getting a huge fine from the FTC in the order of $62 million, guys, for tricking home sellers. So if you sold your home to Open Door over the past couple of years, there's a very good chance that they screwed you over. And this is just so sad in so many ways because already these institutional investors are screwing up our housing market, overvaluing things, and making it harder for the average person to buy. Not only that, but now they're getting away with murder because they have this $62 million fine that they have to pay. Oh yeah, great. Who benefits from that, guys? This is a fine from the FTC that goes straight into the pocket of the government. So instead of them saying, no, you guys are shut down for screwing over sellers and customers, no, we're just gonna fine you, slap on the wrist. I'm sure $62 million is nothing for these guys. And you get to go on business as usual with the promise to basically stop the tactics that they're claiming were used to uh, pay under market value for people's homes because the FTC alleges that Open Door used misleading and deceptive information when in reality, most people who sold to Open Door made thousands of dollars less than they would have made selling their homes using the traditional process. So we're talking thousands of dollars less, guys. That is significant because when you're selling real estate, it all adds up and say, if you got ripped off on the, on the order of say five grand, that could have covered your closing costs or part of the commission to a real estate agent, whatever. This is proof right here that these guys are criminals and getting to walk free, you know? If I go right now into somebody's house and break in and steal five grand from them, I'm going to jail, okay? I'm gonna be behind bars. But these guys just get to pay a $62 million fine and go on with life and operate business as usual. Guys, if you don't think this is criminal, I don't know what is because to me, this is a tragedy and a big warning if you're getting offer letters right now from Open Door and you've been thinking about selling your home because you don't want to fall for this, guys. Use a real estate agent who knows the market and get the fair market value for your property. Don't trust these companies like Open Door to do a quick sale out of convenience because that convenience is gonna cost you more than you think. Because it says here that Open Door's offers have been below market value on average and its costs to sell are higher than what consumers typically pay when using a traditional realtor. So you've been warned, if you're gonna use Open Door after this, that's on you but you can't say you didn't hear it from me but guys i think this is totally wrong on so many levels especially the fact that these guys are able to just get away with this and keep operating and do business as usual it's completely unfair it's unjust and it shouldn't be allowed now the reality is there's a lot of confusion out there right now of what to call this current state of the housing market that we're in. Some people are saying it's a recession. Some people are saying it's just a housing market correction, while other people are saying it's a housing market crash. Now, these are all just labels and they don't really have any meaning, but the biggest wild card here is that a typical real estate cycle has four phases, okay? Expansion, which we already saw over the past couple years, hyper supply, which is the missing ingredient of right now in today's market crash, so to speak, recession and recovery, okay? But the hyper supply is missing from this current cycle and the experts out there can't agree on what's gonna be next, you know, what's gonna happen after this. Nobody really knows. I mean, I don't even know. I just guess and uh, give you guys my best information on what I think is gonna happen. But. At the end of the day, no one really knows, guys, because some of the experts are saying uh, the housing market is in a recession, and that likely means that the rest of the economy will be in a recession soon. Now, we already know that we're officially in a recession looking at GDP figures, and the housing market looks like it's in a recession. So let's call it what it is, guys. This is a recession. And what they're saying here is that if we're in a recession, then there's only one of two things that can happen next, but I think it's a combination of both depending on where you live. It's either gonna be a market crash or a market correction. Now, by looking at what we talked about earlier in Southwest Florida, these guys look like they're headed for a market crash, more than likely. 
just based on what's happening right now and the year's not even over and interest rates haven't even peaked yet so but maybe you live in an area where the market is still strong and maybe it will just be a correction it might not happen the same everywhere which is why it's so important to be in tune with your local market guys now it doesn't really matter what side of the argument you're on whether you think the housing market's going to crash hard or you think it's going to be a mild correction but we all have to acknowledge that things are starting to slow down pretty much everywhere this is a universal fact at this time now there's a nice saying that i like to say guys you can have your own opinion but you can't have your own facts all right and the reality is and the fact is that things are slowing down by how much and for how long is yet to be seen one thing some of you have asked me in the comments which i thought was an interesting thing to cover in this video is why would somebody be a so-called panic seller meaning like okay now that prices are going down and why would they sell their house now versus when the market was you know at its peak and they could have gotten way more money well first of all they probably didn't realize it was at the peak. People think it's gonna to continue to go up, which we're clearly seeing that's not the case anymore. But right after the latest GDP announcement last Thursday, that basically told us that we're in a recession, even though they don't want to announce it officially, get this, the Google search term of sell my house fast spiked 2,750% after that announcement. There are panic sellers out there because as soon as people heard that GDP's down and it's basically a recession, people got scared. And anyone who was thinking of selling their home probably panicked and looked this up to see, you know, what can I do to sell my house fast? And the scary part about this is probably what a lot of those sellers found if they went on Google and did this search is they're gonna come across these companies like Open Door and Zillow that buy homes, you know, to make it look easy, right? Because that, that's their promise that they're going to help you sell your house fast. But remember, it comes at the cost of getting less than you could if you were to use an agent. Now, that's obviously with the caveat that you use an agent that knows your market well and has experience, not somebody, you know, still wet behind the ears that doesn't know anything yet. So, it sucks when you're a new real estate agent because that's kind of the situation you're in. You don't have the experience yet, but you need somebody to give you that experience. So that part kind of sucks. But guys, hire somebody with experience that can sell your house for a much better price than these open door crooks. This is my biggest enemy when I come out and shoot videos in the middle of the day like this. I got to fight the noise of the landscapers. I'm constantly running away from all these lawn mowers and weed trimmers. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it wasn't just the search term of sell my home fast that spiked after the GDP announcement. Another search that spiked 1900% guys was what does a recession mean for me? So obviously there's a lot of people out there that probably don't really even know what a recession is and they're worried about how it might affect their income, their household, whatever. And it's a legitimate concern, and it's good that people are looking this up. I'm just worried about what kind of answers might come up on Google whenever they, they look these type of things up. Because obviously, there's a lot of advertisers out there trying to get your money, and people can be easily taken advantage of. So I hope some of the people that looked up uh, what does a recession mean for me will see this video, because I'm not trying to take anything from you. I'm just trying to give you the knowledge that's gonna help you in this recession. I came across another fascinating article today that talked about how much, on average, inflation is taking out of the every man's pocket right now. And it turns out there's a nice round number that was calculated by Moody's Analytics, and that number is $460 a month, guys, on average, that people are being charged extra for things right now because of inflation. So. For some people, that might be nothing. For others, that could be the death blow to your monthly budget. So 
It depends on how much money you make, right? This is the issue with recessions and the inflation problem that we're having right now. Some people can easily afford another $500 a month in expenses and it's not really gonna hurt them. If you make 10 grand a month or 20 grand a month, an extra 500 bucks a month is nothing. But if you are struggling right now and you make $2,500 a month or $3,000 a month, that extra 500 is a significant portion of your current income. And this report is coming out right at the same time that household debt rose to a record $16.5 trillion in the second quarter of 2022. And this debt load has been driven by more than 200 billion in excess household mortgage debt, coupled with a significant rise in debt from consumer credit cards and auto loans. So clearly the debt bubble is increasing as inflation goes up. And I think this is only gonna to continue to get worse, guys. People are probably gonna be maxing out every single form of credit they have right now in order to just stay afloat and pay the bills. That's what these numbers are indicating, if you ask me. Because it says right in here, consumers are spending more money every month on the same basic necessities, just things that we need to get by, and discretionary purchases they were paying for just one year ago. And that's the other half and the other problem to this equation is that people don't know when to call it quits when it comes to discretionary spending, things you don't need. There, people can't discriminate the difference between needs and wants in times of desperation like this. Look at this. What does this say? This guy's has some kind of violation here. Probably something to do with this gate. Now check it out, right across the street we have another one for sale. I didn't walk on the other side of the block like this last time, so we didn't see this listing yet. Let's see how much they want for this one. And adding fuel to this debt fire, guys, is the fact that they had, there was all this pent up demand from people staying home during the pandemic that people are back to traveling and dining out and shopping in general now that restrictions have eased everywhere, even though they can't really afford it and it's coming at the worst timing ever when prices are going up. So people are wanting to spend more money because they want to get their life back at the same time Prices are up everywhere across the board. So this makes no sense. Psychologically speaking, this is just as insane as the seller on the other side of the street that thinks they can get a million dollars more for their house now one year later. Now, of course, this article gives some good advice on steps that people can take in order to curb their spending and save a little bit but most people aren't doing this and that's the problem guys they say to do things like rebalance your budget you know track your spending i know for a fact most people don't do this cut out the luxury items or the discretionary spending which means not going out you know not traveling not doing all these expensive things right now but yet people are willing to go into debt over this and this is the state of our country right now if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Check out my next video on the screen right over here, and I'll see you over in the next one.